It was his team, and you know, he just earned everybody's trust week in and week out. Snap to Rogers, jump in the middle, end zone, touchdown! I've had a chip on my shoulder since I was 17 years old. I've always felt like my skills have been underappreciated. I've been overlooked and felt like I deserve an opportunity. Never got it. Francisco 49ers select Alex Smith. Getting passed in the draft. That was probably the best thing to happen. Hopefully he watches me and gets something from that. My contract doesn't say I have to get Aaron Rodgers ready to play. Rodgers play action looks to the end zone. What has it been like since the Super Bowl? Uh, it's been a roller coaster. Oh, Aaron Rodgers! Oh. Aaron Rodgers, touchdown! Missing a new challenge, new season. Let's see what happens. Rodgers play action looks to the end zone. Rainbow's to Jordy Nelson. He's got it! Touchdown! Now that he's won a Super Bowl. Now that he's scrubbed away the bad taste left behind by his immediate predecessor, now that he's recognized as perhaps the best quarterback in football, Aaron Rodgers throws the end zone. He's got him. Touchdown! It's easy to forget that Aaron Rodgers' success wasn't guaranteed. At every step, from high school to college, from the day he was drafted to the day he stepped in to replace Brett Favre as the Green Bay Packers quarterback, Aaron Rodgers has been doubted. I've always felt like my skills have been underappreciated. Um, I've been overlooked, and I've had a chip on my shoulder and felt like I deserve an opportunity. You know, one of his favorite poems is The World Less Traveled, and I think he's done that. You know, I think he's gone down a road that hardly anybody's had to go down. The middle of Ed and Darla Rogers' three sons, Aaron was a 49ers fan growing up in Chico, California, two hours northeast of Sacramento. From as early on as he could write, he had a playbook, and he was drawing up plays all the time, X's and O's, and he'd take his little G.I. Joe guys and line them up on this wooden football um, pad that Dad built him, and he would do plays. When Aaron was nine, the family relocated to Oregon. His father, at the age of 38, had decided to switch careers and return to school to become a chiropractor. There's the top of the deck. You know, the things that we did, the kind of living on the edge, basically. Uh, you know, we moved up there really on faith. We didn't have a lot of money. I was going through school. My wife was working. Hi, honey. Things got tight. Money got tight. My mom and my brothers lived at my aunt's house. They have a llama ranch in southern Oregon. We raked up some poop and uh, cleaned the pens out for a few months while Dad went to summer school. I think those are great character lessons, you know, just uh, life lessons that I think are invaluable to go through. After Aaron's father graduated, the family moved back to Chico. Aaron was in middle school, where he excelled in baseball, basketball, and especially football. We wanted him in a private school. But to get into this school, you had to do an interview with the principal. And one of the questions she posed to him was, well, what are you going to do for the school? And without batting an eye, he just goes, well, I'm going to improve your sports program. Uh, well, confidence is something I've never really lacked. I think there was one, yeah, yeah, yeah you can laugh, that's OK. Uh, that, to me, is the most important quarterback trait, because you have to have confidence in yourself in order to, to instill confidence in your teammates. In 2000, as a junior, Rodgers became the starting quarterback at Pleasant Valley High School. In his two seasons there, Rodgers, who at the time was only 5'11", was twice named All-Section and set multiple school records. More than anything, he wanted to play quarterback for Bobby Bowden at Florida State. Inside the five and into the end zone for a touchdown. Mercy! But Florida State didn't want Rodgers, nor did any other Division I school. He kept his rejection letters as motivation from schools that said they, they had no interest in him, maybe he should consider Division Three. He kept them visually in front of him to motivate him. Why do you think no one 
believed in you. Far too much weight is, is put into your height, your weight, your 40 time, your bench press. The things you can't measure, your character, your confidence, your mental toughness, your physical toughness. Not as much weight is put into that. And fortunately enough, I was, I was able to fly under the radar. I think it's the best thing that happened to me. Rogers lets one go long. He's got a man down there. Man Division One's loss was Butte's gain, as in Butte Community College, just a few miles from Rogers' home in Chico. Rogers was that rare football prospect attending junior college not because of poor test scores. In fact, he'd scored 13-10 on his SATs. At Butte, in the fall of 2002, Rogers, who'd grown to six foot two, threw for 28 touchdowns and nearly 2,500 yards. Still, he went largely overlooked. When you're in the season and nobody's calling, you start to wonder if, if you're going to have to be a junior coach for another year. I felt like, you know, my future was beyond, you know, going to Butte College. Then in early 2003, Jeff Tedford, the head coach at Cal Berkeley, came to Butte, not to scout Rogers, but one of his receivers. Coach Tedford comes out and he goes, can I come in and see some film? I show him one play where he takes a three-step drop, throws that slant um, for a touchdown, and Tedford just turns off the projector and he goes, hey, that's the best quarterback I've ever seen. Um, that kid will play in the NFL someday. Well, you had a, a brilliant career here at Butte College and uh, going to be moving on now, I guess. Uh, is it Cal Berkeley? Yeah, pretty sure right now, but, uh, you know, it's been fun. Butte, Butte has been uh, everything I've ever hoped and, uh, and even more. And I got him on the phone that night and told him what I thought and told him we were going to offer him a scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, he was at a different level the way he throws the football. Touchdown, California! You know, I knew right then he's going to be a first-round pick. In 2003, his first season at Cal, Rogers shot all the way up to number one on the depth chart. I was able to pass up a number of guys, highly recruited, highly touted, who maybe didn't have that same feeling of needing to prove themselves all the time, and I did. And that just drove me like crazy. His first year here, the Virginia Tech game, against great speed, against great competition, he just picked them apart. The next year, as a junior, Rodgers carried Cal to his highest number three in the national rankings. After that season, he decided to enter the 2005 NFL Draft, and experts predicted that the 49ers, his hometown team, would make him the first overall pick. The San Francisco 49ers select Alex Smith, quarterback, Utah. Rodgers didn't go first or second or third. He didn't go in the top 10. He didn't go in the top 20. Then, as the draft continued, he became an object of pity and morbid curiosity. A couple of weeks ago, Aaron, you were the clear-cut number one. What's changed over that time? Yeah, I wish I could tell you. Uh, I haven't changed anything. I think it's just perception of me or, or maybe needs of the teams at the spots. And uh, I'm just, you know, I'm not too worried. He had to really persevere and be a gentleman for five and a half hours with cameras just hovering around, hoping there would be a breakdown. And it's embarrassing. You know the whole world's watching. Your phone's buzzing every two minutes, and you're hoping it's a team calling, but it's just your buddy saying, hey, nice hair, nice suit, smile a little bit, you know, kiss your mom, you know, just, just making jokes, and, and it's hard to laugh in a situation where you know everybody's laughing at you. Somebody's going to get themselves a heck of a steal if he falls down the board a bit. With the 24th selection in the 2005 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Aaron Rodgers, quarterback of California. Well, we're just glad he's on a team. <laughs> we're glad that uh, no more picks went by. You get drafted by a team that's got a guy at quarterback who He's only played like 7,000 consecutive games there and is going to the Hall of Fame. What was that like?
you get drafted by a team that's got a guy at quarterback who has only played like 7,000 consecutive games there and is going to the Hall of Fame. What was that like? You know what, to be honest, it was, I was so relieved I got picked, but I hadn't really studied uh, anything about Green Bay. And I couldn't really tell you on a map where Wisconsin was. For Aaron Rodgers, slipping to the 24th pick in the 2005 draft was a disappointment. But going to the Packers meant there'd be no immediate pressure to play. It's going to be fun just meeting the teammates and, and the coaching staff and, and being able to start to, to gel with this team. It also meant that eventually he'd be under tremendous pressure as the man tapped to replace Brett Favre. How helpful was Brett to you when you were his understudy? I think the, the most helpful thing was watching him. I got to see his mannerisms, uh, the way he conducted the huddle, and just tried to take uh, the good things I saw uh, and incorporate those into my own game. What about on a personal level? Were you guys close? I th yeah, I thought we were. I, re I really did. You know, the first year was, it was a tough year. I'm sure there was some, some feelings of uh, frustration that they, that they picked his potential successor in the first round, knowing what that means. We're all, you know, we're all men. We understand it's a business, and we know, you know, what kind of statement that is when you take a guy in the first round. Uh, that guy's going to have to play at some point. My contract doesn't say I have to get Aaron Rodgers ready to play. Now, hopefully he watches me and, and gets something from that. It wasn't the easiest year for me in 05, uh, but then in 06 and 07, it was just him and I, and, and I thought our relationship really really got, got strong, and, and uh, he realized that I was in his corner. That changed after Rodgers' third season in 2007. Favre retired, but soon changed his mind and all but demanded his job back. What was your reaction when he decided to unretire and lobbied to return to Green Bay? Uh, a lot of confusion. A lot of confusion and, and um, surprise. I was surprised. I would put in a lot of work in the offseason. And I'd be, I would be disappointed if, if I didn't get an opportunity this year. But knowing that it was out of my control. Your thoughts on the possibility of Brett maybe coming back the next couple days? Would you welcome him back? Me and Brett have never had a problem, so uh, th there wouldn't be any issues between, uh, between us. I'm incredibly proud of how he handled all the pressure of following the legend Brett Favre. He got caught in a very, very difficult political mess. That's something I, w I wouldn't wish on, on a lot of people. It's not a, it's not a fun situation to be in. Um, having to uh, get in front of 50 cameras a couple times a week and, uh, and answer the same questions was difficult. And, you know, maybe a little unfair as well. Why unfair? Because the situation was, was bigger than, than all of us involved. I was the guy caught in the middle of, uh, of a struggle and it was out of my control. The Packers stood firm with Rodgers, trading Favre to the Jets, much to the dismay of many of their fans. I'm thankful for uh, an organization that stood behind me and, and told the truth and, and stuck to their guns. And that's all I could ask for. My teammates stood beside me. And it was a difficult time, it was. But I, I have no regrets about, about the things that I said in front of the cameras and the way I, I carried myself. We're excited about being able to move forward together as a team now. We wish Brett nothing but the best. In 2008, his first season as a starter, Rodgers was solid but struggled at times, as the Packers won only six games. It was his team, and you know, he just earned everybody's trust week in and week out. But Aaron Rodgers was ready to play when it was his turn. The following year, the Packers finished 11-5 and, and reached the playoffs. And Rodgers, who was named to the Pro Bowl, threw for 30 touchdowns and nearly 4,500 yards. The snap to Rodgers. A-Rod looks, throws the end zone. Touchdown! He has that Cali swagger, I call it. He's confident in his own ability, and it's almost like, can you stop me? Late in the 2010 season, Rodgers engineered one of the greatest runs ever in the NFL. Packers won their final six games, including three playoff games on the road, and Super Bowl 45, in which they defeated the Pittsburgh Steelers 31 to 25. The Lombardi Trophy is going back home to Green Bay. 
You know, he put together probably the finest six-game stretch that I've ever been part of. He kept getting better and better as the season wore on. Uh, as the challenges heightened, Aaron stepped his game up. How do people, you think, treat you different now that you're a Super Bowl champion and a Super Bowl MVP? Well, right or wrong, I think uh, it just gave me, uh, my game, some legitimacy. And, and, you know, it's funny to think if we had lost, you know, would I, would I not be considered an elite quarterback or would I still be uh, in the shadow of, of the former quarterback that played here? I'm just thankful we won that game. What's your relationship with Brett now? I don't have one. I don't have one. Just haven't talked to him. No congratulations after the Super Bowl? I haven't talked to him. What did you tell him after the game? I was so proud of him. And after that, he said, my goals have changed, Mom. I don't really desire anymore to be the best quarterback in the NFL. He goes, I want to be remembered as one of the best men that ever played quarterback in the NFL. After winning Super Bowl 45, the challenge for Rodgers now is coping with the pressures and demands of stardom. In May, he became the face of the Mac Fund a Milwaukee-based charity that combats childhood cancers. Knowing that all that money is going to go to research that may give loved ones, you know, another few days, another week, another year, might find a cure um, for a kid with cancer to give him a chance in normal life. It's humbling, very humbling. One of those children is Jack Bartos, a 10-year-old from Heartland, Wisconsin, who's been fighting cancer of the nervous system for the last six years. Jack met Aaron Rodgers a few weeks after the Super Bowl. What do you think of Aaron Rodgers as a football player? He's awesome. Why? Because he chucks it really far. Jack has relapsed um, about six times at this point, and each one of them more devastating than the next. Jack and his family were invited to join Rodgers at a Mac Fund event in May in Milwaukee. Late in the evening, Jack was called to the stage. What does it mean to you when you see a nine-year-old boy like Jack, who has struggled so much, express how much it means to him that you two have a relationship? Yeah, I mean, I'm floored. I'm just completely, um, I mean, I'm at a loss for words. Like, it's, it's just really touching. It's a deep, deep sense of, uh, just longing for that kid to, to have the chance that I had when I was nine years old, to be healthy and to play sports and, and enjoy life and know that he's got to go to Texas next week and start another phase of chemotherapy. Um, just breaks your heart. For most of his life, Aaron Rodgers went unnoticed. He was ignored, overlooked. But after leading the Packers to victory in Super Bowl 45, all that has changed. It's my touchdown dance. So you're a dancer? No, I'm a quarterback. Everybody in the state and beyond wants a piece of you right now. Great, uh, great shot. Where, where do you find the wherewithal and the patience? You know what, it's, it's an honor to, to play for the Packers and a privilege. But at the same time, you, you kind of lose part of that disability to be a, a human being sometimes. Hey, good luck to you. Stay healthy. All right, I'll try. But you're often, you know, maybe more of a commodity uh, than, a, than a person. You know, what can, what can they get from you? For the Super Bowl MVP, there's no shortage of opportunities. In Wisconsin, in particular, Rogers is everywhere. We were with him in July when he shot a commercial for a local bank. Mark. Okay, guys, here we go. Ready and action. Now that you're back in uniform for the first time since the Super Bowl, how does it feel to have this, this outfit on? I'm just wondering what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> is that part of the deal? Oh. Is this the actual uniform? You're, this is the actual uniform. Yours? I mean, you brought it from home or whatever? I, yeah, no, the Packers sent it down, actually. Oh, okay. 
do you like show tunes? Are you kidding me? So this is what you're talking about, all those months of lockout, getting back in a uniform. It was to be in this situation with... Just right yeah. here. <laughs> yep, next to Penny. Not to get a manicure and pedicure. Action. Lose the cleats, pal. You're in for a manicure. Is this going to hurt? Oh, no, I don't think so. There's a, a phrase now going around in my business. When we do an athlete, we hope he's going to be a Peyton Manning. He's a Peyton Manning. I think he's got a big future in media. I, mean, I think he's, he's got what it takes. <gasps> Hello, Aaron Rodgers. Oh, my. Oh. While acting may or may not be Rodgers' calling, his passion, unquestionably, is music. He recently created his own label, suspended Sunrise Recordings, and signed its first band, The Make, from Chico, California, his hometown. It's really what I want to do when I'm done playing. I've hired people who are a lot smarter than I am to help run that when I'm busy with the season. Um, but it's, it's fun for me to, to take a project and challenge myself to take it from where it's at uh, to where I want it to, to go, to be successful. He's very assertive, but he carries himself really well and he knows business really well. Everything's you know very black and white and laid out and we all communicate about it and we make it happen. So it's, it's, it's really cool. Before the 2011 season, The Make shot a music video for its hit single, Get It, at a local bowling alley in Rogers' hometown. Rogers naturally made a cameo. Music to me is so intriguing because it's something I don't do well. I love the scene that is music and, and hearing good live music, to me there's, there's not much better unless you're at a big time sporting event. Tonight, you take the field for the first time in an NFL regular season game as a Super Bowl champion. What is the routine on game day? Well, it's usually not coming out here talking to you, but... Uh, <laughs> we appreciate the exception bet, being bet, made. <laughs> no, I just, I like to just relax, get into a relaxed mode and make sure I'm just thinking about the right things. A couple little reminders that I need to think about during the game and then I'm ready to play. What thoughts are uppermost in your mind? This is a new challenge, new season, uh, new team. So we're just excited about 2011. Let's see what happens. Snap to Aaron Rodgers. Go to the left side. Back to the Touchdown, Greg Givens. Beginning with that night in September, Rodgers would lead the Packers to a 15-1 record. Their season would end, however, in a home playoff loss to the eventual Super Bowl champions, the New York Giants. Still, Rodgers was named the NFL MVP as he threw for 45 touchdowns and nearly 4,700 yards. At 18, he was the backup at Butte Community College. At 28, he's the biggest star in the game. When you think about your career and your life the last 10 years, what do you see as kind of an overarching theme here? Uh. I think kind of the, the underdog, the underdog story. Um, and that's kind of been a positive for me. That might not be how somebody from the, from a, an outside perspective sees it, but I just kind of always kept that, uh, those doubters on my mind and enjoyed the opportunity to prove those, those people wrong. Everything that you went through must now only make what you've achieved seem that much more gratifying. Am I right? Yeah, I'd say that's, that's a correct statement. <laughs> that's why you get the grin. The journey is the sweetest part, no doubt about it. To be able to achieve uh, the ultimate success of winning Super Bowl last year just kind of brings, brings some closure to, I think, the, the first part of my career. And I think hopefully we can kind of close that book, put it on the shelf, and, and start writing a new chapter.